game and see what they both decide to start. They've got the same pool of six to pick from, uh, so it would be curious to see if they're able to go with the same lead as well. Well, Eduardo leading out with Porygon 2 and the Primarina, so a solid sort of trick room strategy. And Nico going for the more offensive dynamic threat here of the Dragapult and the Terrakion. And that beat up strategy is certainly a threat. You know, Eduardo doesn't have any redirection here at the moment, so it's going to be interesting to see how they play this out. Well, it doesn't look like uh, Nico has access to it. I, I didn't see his moves. He went through a, a little bit quickly, um, and even my private eyes weren't able to see because we obviously have access to Nico's side here. Um, but, I mean, the main thing here, the most important thing mm -hmm. is uh, you've got Trakion on the field in front of the Porygon, and you're able to start landing close combat. So that's absolutely key, and, and make it, that's why I think Terrakion uh, picked up a number of kind of cool additional... Uh, usage points in two people because they saw the rise of Porygon 2. That's the thing, Porygon 2 always in a prime position to be a perfect trick room Pokemon here. No Dynamax on Nico's side. Um, gonna be the Dragon Dart's gonna come out though and connect into that Porygon 2. Um, just dealing a decent chunk of damage there, but nowhere near enough to stop it from being such an offensive threat. Terrakion, however, is the offensive threat to Porygon 2, follows up with that close combat and is able to pick up the KO. So Nico manages to remove the threat of Trick Room straight away from the field. Yes, it's had its defenses boosted, um, but the fact that it's been able to waste one of Eduardo's Dynamax turns and pick up a solid KO against a potential threat, really great play there by Nico. That's a really perfect start, and that's the position that you want to see uh, your Terrakion in, is staring down uh, this Porygon. Of course, the Dragon Darts helped out, made sure that those numbers were nice and easy to hit, and this is the perfect execution of Terrakion. Getting that knockout turn one, removing the threat of Trick Room. Uh, of course, he now has his own Porygon too, which he can bring in, and maybe he's kind of in the driving seat there, right? He's able to uh, mm -hmm. decide if Trick Room goes up or not, and if he's not feeling it, if his team doesn't match up the way he wants, fine just don't don't trick room and then play around it with something like the ice beams or the thunderbolts which uh, assuming the bolt beam as it previously has been known a uh, thunderbolt ice beam combination would be real mm -hmm. good right here against rillaboom and primarina well Porygon 2 first going to take that grassy glide from the opposing rillaboom's dragon dragapult follows up again with the dragon darts going to be targeting down of course into that rillaboom the fairy typing of primarina keeping it nice and safe from this particular move a little bit of recoil coming out from the life orb on that dragapult as primarina follows up with the max hailstorm so dragapult is going to be ko'd by this devastating ice move as of course the weather's going to change upon the field as well and deal out a little bit of chip this is where you get those interesting interactions at the end of each turn you know you've got the grass train on the field going to be getting a little bit of hp recovery but then also hp is going to be chipped away by the hail as you can see here as well the hail's the one that goes off first and that obviously ends up in some unique situations where if you're really 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 low you get knocked out before you get the recovery so you do have to be careful and, and cognizant of that um, as, a, as a player. Uh, that said, I mean, losing the, the Dragapult there, um, not the worst thing in the world uh, for for Nico. I think that it's kind of done its job and uh, getting that damage down with the Dragon Darts a couple times is probably enough to, to deal with things. It can't answer the Primarina. You're not worried about the Primarina. Mm. But putting that Rillaboom nice and low, maybe being able to, you know, pick that off with the Ice Beam, though we do see it as Ice Beam and Thunderbolt, uh, being able to tidy up that, and then you can like let your other Pokemon focus on this Primarina. So uh, in this case, it's the Rillaboom, the perfect Pokemon to try and deal with Primarina. And quite importantly, something to note, uh, this is the last turn of Primarina's Dynamax. And we haven't seen that from the Eco side of the field yet. So if he has any kind of advantage going into the last few turns of this game, he's then going to be able to capitalize on it with a Dynamax of his own. And, and I think that's going to be really important for him. So you also really like the way that Nico's been able to play this. Like you said, hasn't used his Dynamax yet, even though in that sort of turn zero, having the Dragapult and the Terrakion together on the field looks to be in an optimal position to go for that kind of beat up and Dynamax on the Terrakion, but has actually been able to preserve his Terrakion in the back with its Focus Sash still intact and still has prime access to its Dynamax. But I feel like this is actually gonna be a Gigantamax coming out onto that Rillaboom. And this is just perfect play here by Nico. It's Pokemon I haven't actually seen yet from a custom perspective in action. So very excited to see Gigantamax Rillaboom here out on the field. And that's something that Primarina really, really has to worry about. It can be such an offensive threat with that G-Max drum solo picking up so much damage. And hey, Rillaboom is twirling its batons. It's exactly what it's going for. Tucking down straight to that Primarina and picks up the solid KO. So much damage coming out from Rillaboom. 
Before we get into what goes on in that turn, I'd like to clarify they're called drumsticks and not batons, in my opinion. <laughs> Moving on, it's a really good way to do with the free marina, and that is actually uh, really kind of impactful, being able to, to just remove that from the field, uh, give your opponent a limited amount of Dynamax turns, uh, and just say, okay, well you only got two, I'm probably in a really good position to get three, and on a, a simple metric like that, I mean, that's usually one of the ways you can kind of count an advantage, right? Um, of course, we're getting that lovely round of Grassy Terrain Recovery. Um, but, I mean, nico has got some really kind of good Pokemon left for him um, in the Terrakion. I think as long as he can deal with this Rillaboom, which I imagine the Porygon's going to do quite a handy job of, uh, then he can just deal with the uh, Incineroar with the Terrakion as, as soon as it comes to a close. So there has been a change, the the uh, an actual two Pokemon difference. Uh, from these trainers and, and that has definitely landed I think in Nico's favor just purely that team selection Yeah, exactly and you can see the forfeit going on there and I mean what phenomenal play from Nico there being able to constantly think Several turns ahead and make sure that he preserved the Pokemon that he needed and use the optimal moments to go for that Gigantamax, but at the same time from Eduardo's side, you know, he played quite boldly at the beginning going for that um, Primarina being able to apply a lot of pressure, but actually played it quite defensively going for that max guard straight away on turn one. And I know maybe he was hoping to be able to get the Trick Room off with the Porygon 2, but actually he was punished for that play and it could have been a really great opportunity for him to deal out some big damage, maybe take the um, Dragapult out of the action straight away and maybe it would have put him in a little bit more of a sort of positive position. Playing defensively with that Primarina did cost him, and the Max Guard was was kind of easily worked around, right? The, the Dragon Darts and the uh, the follow-up close combat definitely put Eduardo on the back foot from, from turn number one. And, and while I think that uh, you have to be smart with your Dynamax and you don't want to lose it too early, there really wasn't a threat to it on the field. So maybe something like a Max Hailstorm on that turn one, uh, just upping the pace of the game a little bit from Eduardo's side, mm -hmm. we could have had a very different match. But as soon as that Porygon 2 went down, I think a key portion of the four Pokemon selection uh, that Eduardo had bought had kind of fallen through, and the the pace was set from there. Exactly. We also saw that sort of triangle going on as well with the Fire, Water, Grass Core. Um, obviously, the really being able to apply so much pressure to the Prima Arena, and then Incineroar was there on the field as well that could deal some good damage to the Rillaboom in return. But when the Rillaboom's in this Gigantamax phase and it's got the HP doubled as well, the little Incineroar doesn't really look too much of a threat. So it's going to be interesting to see how Eduardo is maybe going to be able to adjust and maybe have a little bit more offense. So let's jump into game two, see how he's going to be able to change it up and see if he can push Nico to a game three. Remember, we're in the loser's bracket here. To lose this game means you're out of the competition. Eduardo, however, going to stick to the same team. Leeds, he's got the Prima Arena and the Porygon 2. And Nico doing the exact same thing. I mean, why not? You won game one with it. Taraki on Dragapult out on the field. Alathin Lizzie, the boys are back in town and we've got the same leads. Uh, Eduardo feeling he can make a change and uh, run it back a little bit differently to, to what we got in game number one. Uh, that said, I'm not sure there's actually too many big options uh, for him there. Um, it looks like Nico, uh, based on what I saw from a little sneak of the, his move selection there, may be making kind of a call here. Uh, and assuming something's going to change in and out uh, and go from there. So we'll see uh, if the Terrakion's able to, to push on uh, in the Dynamax form, which we're going to be getting. And, and personally, I, I don't think we've seen many Dynamax Terrakions. We saw one yesterday, um, and it, it just wasn't uh, as impactful as I think it could have been. And, and this could be a very quick change. Well, I wonder if Nico can change your mind on that with his Dynamax Terrakion. And Eduardo also going to go for that Dynamax straight away here in turn one, getting that offensive pressure out on the field immediately. This is what you need to be able to do when you're playing such hyper-offensive teams. But actually, surprise, surprise, it's another one um, for our incredible Dynamax potential Pokemon. We have got the Porygon 2 here out on the field. And I mean, this makes a lot of sense. If you think you're going to be hit by the same um, strategy that Nico went for um, in the first turn, then you would Dynamax, but there's now a beat up going down into that Porygon 2. Like you said, maybe calling something was going to switch in, but unfortunately not. Porygon 2 able to take these beat ups really, really well. Um, even with that little critical hit, you know, the extra HP really going to help out, particularly the Eevee Light on that Porygon 2 as well. But unfortunately, there by Nico just not making the call. Um, as Max Rockfall follows up from that Terrakion into that Porygon 2. I mean, if he'd gone for the beat up into his own Terrakion, that would have been outstanding. That's an interesting one. Uh, that's certainly a, a curious one. Uh, and Primarina just lands a blizzard in the sandstorm. 
Uh, that's a pretty crazy amount of damage. We'll see what follow-up comes through uh, from this Porygon. Uh, as it is, of course, Dynamax, uh, one, another one that maybe people don't expect. Uh, the Max Hailstorm heading towards the Strachion. This is a lot more of an offensive play from Eduardo. I mean, the thing with Dynamax Porygon 2 is it actually is a really disruptive Pokemon. I mean, it's very hard to take down with the additional HP and bulk, so you always want to leave it alone and not waste your sort of your resources trying to double into it, pick up KOs while it's partner Pokemon. It kind of has free reign and is there unchecked on the field. But at the same time, even though Porygon 2 can't deal out so much damage, you're not as worried about it, those rolls will be stacking up against you, and particularly with Pokemon like Rillaboom, you don't want to be hit by another one of those um, Ice-type moves straight into that slot. It would be really damaging to the Rillaboom's HP, so that when Porygon 2 maybe comes out of its Dynamax, it can then clean up and pick up a solid KO. Yeah, I, I actually missed earlier that, that Nico does have the beat up himself. I, I didn't get to read all the way down the menu, and, and curious to see it heading towards the Porygon rather than uh, something like the Terrakion, right? Uh, that's usually where you, you want to see that one come. Uh, and that's the call I was talking about, right? Like, the, thinking, obviously he knows Eduardo has the Dragapult. If Dragapult comes in there to take a fighting move, kind of responding to what Nico did in turn one of game one, then it makes a little more sense, right? You land the beat-ups, it's obviously a dark-type move, and it does better there. But it's so risky to, to throw both your moves when you could beat up your own Terrakion, get the boost, and then just rock fall and you'd, you'd catch a Dragapult on the switch anyway. So uh, really curious um, to, to go from there. I mean, that's that's the best I, I can fathom for it. As these rock falls are, uh, to put it politely, underwhelming. Uh, consider me whelmed. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Porygon 2 there just being an absolute tank on the field here, just absorbing so much of this damage. Uh, Rillaboom is going to not take so much damage from that Max Hailstorm, but again, these are just going to be adding up, um, you know, through the Protect as well, but still actually does such a decent amount of damage. Uh, Max Rockfall, like you said, was a little bit underwhelming, but anything can go up against this Porygon too, and I think you're right though, if you were Nico, you potentially thought that Dragapult would come in, and if he doesn't have, you don't necessarily have a Ghost-type move that would, um, be an instantaneous damage ones. You know, often you have those phantom forces that are those two charge moves. Um, so you need to go for that beat up to be able to make sure that you try and pick up the KO against the Dragapult. But definitely high risk. Um, sadly, not the reward there for Nico. But you know, he's a game up. It's loser's bracket. You have to sometimes take those risks in order to stay in the competition. Um, Porygon 2 is still looking to be really strong in that Dynamax though, Adam. Porygon 2 Dynamax has actually been put in in work, I'm gonna be honest. Like, these Max Hailstorms, once you've got the hail up and you, you know, you can con control it and, and go from there, uh, it, it's really good. I mean, it, obviously the Max Rockfalls, we're just having this constant change of weather back and forth and back and forth. And, uh, it's, it's not the easiest to deal with, uh, but uh, I think uh, on paper, I th think if you added it up, the Porygon 2's probably done more with its Dynamax turns, damage-wise, than... <laughs> the the Terrakion from Nico's side so uh certainly an interesting one mm -hmm. uh but it's getting good value out of it and, and making this game really interesting for us to to watch yeah particularly if you add up the residual damage from that hail chip as well Incineroar though does have to take the max knuckle does deal so much damage enough to put the berry on there as well so Incineroar losing its item pretty early on here max hailstorm once again going to come up this time target down into that Porygon 2 dealing about a third of damage as Incineroar goes for that burning jealousy so Actually, very interestingly enough, gonna go and connect onto obviously the Porygon 2 and the Terrakion and burn them. Thanks to that Max Knuckle boosting up the attack, that Incineroar's Jealous is gonna burn for the troubles, basically rendering this Terrakion useless. Yes, Terrakion's in a real sticky situation now. It probably wants to start close combating and taking advantage of that attack boost, but to use a move like Max Knuckle, which obviously you want to for the increased damage, is so risky. You know about Burning Jealousy, and Burning Jealousy is a really cool addition to Incineroar, I, mm. I think. Uh, it's a, a Pokemon that obviously is getting a lot of use because of its natural kit, but those move slots have always been up for debate, and to see people leaning into the Burning Jealousy, particularly as we've come towards the end of our regional brackets and of course uh, our top 16 finals, it's just added up. I, I think it's a cool move, and it's if you make reads, you get so well rewarded for it, right? You know, we all know by now, which max moves boost stats, which ones lower stats, and as soon as you go, mm -hmm. well, it's a, a Terrakion, then... Alright, it's going to Max Knuckle at some point. If I call that Max Knuckle turn, then I'm going to be able to Burning Jealousy, and I'm going to land the, the burn on it. And now that Terrakion, that's, I mean, it, it's going to be doing a, a pitiful amount of damage. 
That's the thing, it's probably gone too. You're really able to take that close combat and now in a prime position where it can easily go for that recover and just cause a lot of problems for Nico further down the line in this match. Porygon 2 going to go for the Thunderbolt though and follow up and actually be able to pick up the KO. So Porygon 2 versus Porygon 2 here. Um, and it looks like Nico's one has actually come out on the end there. Terrakion though really is kind of dead weight in this battle at the moment. It's not applying a lot of offensive pressure. And I think about the only thing that it could potentially do is try and get some Rockside flinches just to help out that Porygon 2 later on. Maybe trying to go for some of those Thunderbolts into the Pre Arena and just stack up some damage that way. But really you need your Terrakion to be able to deal that damage. You've got that plus one attack from the Max Knuckle, out of Dynamax, you really want to be able to utilize that, but Burning Jealousy has something to say about it for sure. Yeah, plus one attack, but burned is not really the trade-off you want after your Max Knuckle. <laughs> uh, and to make matters worse for the Terrakion, Rillaboom comes in towards the end. I mean, uh, Rillaboom's gonna be able to handily deal with this Terrakion, kind of whenever it wants, right? So maybe you can spend a little time helping out the Primarina, deal with this Porygon. Uh, the Primarina's not in any danger right now either. I mean, the Primarina is naturally rather bulky and is, is going to be tough to take out. Uh, of course, Terrakion does have its uh, its option here of uh, maybe just landing a bunch of flinches, uh, but it doesn't look like uh, those are going to be coming through uh, too quickly as, yeah, it looks like Eduardo's just moving to try and wrap up this game and get into game three. Yeah, so much damage coming out from that Riddle Boom. No flinches here. Blizzard also going to connect from the... Um Cream Arena, of course, the hail up as well, really helping out the accuracy of that move as we know it's not always the most reliable. And Eduardo being able to pick up that solid KO just really does put him back into such an offensive pressure here in this match. Um, you know, I think you actually touched on it earlier, Adam. It really came down to the Dynamax here. Dynamax and Porygon 2 are a really unconventional choice, but it put in work. And I think the critical thing was it allowed that Porygon 2 to stay on the field so that it just, that Dynamax was in full use the whole three turns. Porygon 2 was able to come down a relative decent health um, and it just meant that Eduardo's Dynamax Pokemon wasn't a prime target was going to be KO'd and now he's sitting down facing against a Rillaboom yeah I mean it's it's Rillaboom versus three and uh, yeah it's going to be able to deal with this Primarina uh, but the problem is it's then against uh, a combination of Incineroar and uh, opposing Rillaboom uh, which is going to be a problem I mean Incineroar is going to be able to come back in do what Incineroar does and, and just kind of round out the game mm -hmm. with its its normal moveset and, and there's no shocks uh with that obviously the team sheets are available i think if you're if you're nico you're just playing it out seeing if you can maybe weave in uh some attacks but this incineroar uh if i recall is still pretty healthy uh from earlier on and, and there's only so much uh that you can do when when you're uh, against it particularly if it's just gonna intimidate you on the way in then by time with fake mm -hmm. out and yeah it's i mean it's nearly 75 percent health uh, you've really got to be going some after the Intimidate as well to knock it out. So it looks like Eduardo's uh, just going to wrap this one up. Uh, a really a much slower game, I think, than game number one. Uh, but that's kind of learning his way around the matchup a little better and making a really cool adaptation. Yeah, Nico here just going to burn the fake up from the Incineroar. Um, that doesn't actually even transpire. The Woodhammer going to come out and connect into that Protect as Incineroar goes for that Flare. But it's just knowing that the offensive pressure is more than enough from Eduardo here to pick up the KO against that Rillaboom. But I think it's critical as well for Nico here to take this extra time, you know, even though it does look a little bit desolate for him to be able to start thinking about how he's going to approach game three and what adjustments he's going to be able to make. High Horsepower does connect onto the Incineroar. That's maybe a good bit of knowledge for him about how much that move would do, you know, with the Intimidate going into game three. But the really Boom on Eduardo's side able to pick up the solid KO and we're pushing it to a game three, Adam. Yeah, I mean, I, I think from the early portion of this game, uh, Eduardo knew what he needed to do to, to get himself there and he played it really well. Uh, the Max Hailstorm continuously coming from Porygon 2, uh, not something I thought mm -hmm. I'd be talking about, but it, it did so well. And, and that early beat up into the uh, Porygon 2, uh, it, you know, there's there's obviously something that Nico needs to change there because you can't do that. Uh, you didn't even see the Dragapult in game one, so it's very curious to see him go for it in game number two, making that big read. Um, but didn't work out and that's something he's going to have to really look at in game number three. Uh, of course, we haven't seen the Terrakion Dragapult combo at all from Eduardo in this set, and I'd be curious to see if he decides to mix it up and, and throw that in uh, for the last game, because uh, he, he executed it pretty well in, in a couple of his games yesterday, and, and this could be kind of the complete mix of a strategy he needs. Uh, so both trainers are going to have to take a moment, I think, to look at their teams in team preview. 
Yeah, Eduardo making such a comeback there in that game two to level the playing field, but he's not out of the woods yet. He's gonna be able to shake off those nerves. You know, this is now game three. Whoever wins this game is able to stay in the competition. The one who loses will be knocked out. So you've got to go in with that kind of blank space in your mind and just focus ahead on the game in front of you and just keep playing it turn by turn. It's gonna be a close one. I think whatever we see from these trainers is gonna be the best that they can show. I mean, once you get this close to being eliminated, uh, you've really got to dive on in and see what you can get out of your teams. It's gonna be the same lead once again from both trainers. So they're one and one with this lead. Uh, but I, I imagine Nico's gonna change things up with uh, just how he plays this <laughs> one. I mean, maybe thinking that if you caught the Dragapult with the beat up and then Prima Arena might protect again. So you'd be free to go for the beat up on the second turn. Who knows what was going on in Nico's mind in game two, but it's game three now. And I wonder if he is gonna do it. This is the thing, it's that kind of adrenaline. Do you want to set your Terrakion up in the face of that Prima Arena as well? Prima Marina could Dynamax, that's something that Eduardo's done, um, you know, in game one, and then go for something like the Max Geyser that that Terrakion isn't going to appreciate either. Or you can pick up the KO against the Dragapult with the Max Hailstorm. So if you're Nico, you know that Prima Arena is going to be an offensive threat against your team. So you have to make sure that you're not trading a Pokemon and being on the worst end of that trade. It, he hovered beat up for so long. And after <laughs> game two, I imagine he's definitely uh, apprehensive about pressing that button. Uh, but there's the Dynamax coming through on Terrakion. I think Dynamax Terrakion works really well when you have beat up. So these single target moves are just picking up one hit out of the single turn. Uh, but he hovered it. Uh, he mulled it over, didn't want to do something like game two over and over again. So uh, uh, it's a strategy that got talked about so much when the Isle of Armour came through. It's targeting is correct this time. It's targeting is Terrakion, the justified ability, boosting its attack. There's four Pokemon in the team. That's four stages. Terrakion is now a monster to deal with, mm -hmm. uh, but it's got to target correctly. That's the, the key thing with, with Dynamaxing. You've just got to target it properly. Um, I know a lot of people talked about beat up when the Isle of Armor released. They're like, Terrakion's here and, and we can mm -hmm. uh, we can play beat up now. And it's not really shown off yet. So this could be the game to kind of cement it as, yes, it's a real strategy and, and you need to respect it a lot. That's true. We've seen a lot of Terrakion in these finals. But I think that's the first time, Adam, you and I have actually seen the beat up strategy activate. Max Rockfall going to target down into that Prima Arena and picks up such a solid KO. And I mean, I think that was the right targeting there. Prima Arena didn't actually protect, so able to just deal the full effect of that damage. And Primarina just being able to threaten both the Pokemon on Nico's side really was a worry for him. It is one of those things though, it's a little bit of a trade because the Porygon 2's been able to set up Trick Room. But I think the Pokemon, if you're Eduardo, that you want in that Trick Room environment really is gonna be that Primarina. And although you can now bring something else in, maybe something like the Incineroar just to intimidate, um, could be a good option, but then at the same time, you can't fake out the Dragon Pole and you can't fake out a Dynamax Pokemon. So it kind of leaves Incineroar in an awkward position. So I think bringing in Rillaboom, again, a Pokemon that can have that priority with the Grassy Guide on the Grassy Terrain, could be really optimal for him here. I think Rillaboom is a fantastic addition here. Something that can handily deal with that Terrakion too, uh, and, and try and answer it as, as quickly as possible. Uh, because it's gone kind of, I don't want to say well for Eduardo. He did, of course, lose a Pokemon in turn number one, but he got Trick Room set up. And that's the first time we've seen that come to the fore in this set. And something maybe he's thought about through games one and two, right? To say, well, okay, you've managed to to set up this Terrakion and go big with it. You're playing the faster mode of our six where you're playing Terrakion Dragapult. So I'm actually just going to make the offering that either I'm going to Trick Room with the Porygon, which he's not been allowed to do or he's not opted for in, in previous turns, or you're going to get knocked out by the Primarina. So kind of putting Nico in a, a tough position there on what he wants to do. I don't think either target is bad from him. I think both just forced the game to be played out a different way. And, and now, of course, the, uh, the Trick Room's in play. It's time to get your own uh, Gigantamax in play for this Rillaboom. So uh, really cool to see that one again. Uh, we've been waiting for it. They're just like buses. Uh, two of them come along at once. <laughs> oh, yeah. 100%. And I like the switch in here by Nico. You want to get that Intimidate off against the Rillaboom. Um, Terrakion going to go for the Max Guard, though, protecting itself from any of those Grass-type moves. It's probably going to go for the Ice Beam. Great switch in here by the Incineroar. Going to be able to take that much better than the Dragapult that was there. As Rillaboom does go for the G-Max Drum Solo, but no twirling of those drumsticks, as I've now been corrected, as Max Guard was in play. <laughs> Yeah, the, the drum solo is not going to be able to do anything, but that doesn't really change the fact that drum solo can just land into that Terrakion next turn, right? Like, there's nothing <laughs> to stop that uh, and really force it out. So unless you're going to land, uh, like, a double max guard and then a protect, which is 
probably a little ambitious uh, for Nico. Uh, things aren't looking too peachy for him here. I think he's going to need to find uh, some way of, of switching things around really, really quickly. It uh, looks like his game plan right now is to try and uh, switch things up. Uh, and, and slow the Rillaboom down. So while Nico's been playing very, very offensively for the duration of this game, uh, it, it kind of going to the, the slower part of this team, uh, looks like he's going to be landing parting shots, and that's going to be key in maybe giving that Terrakion one more chance to move. Exactly. You know, these Dynamax Pokemon such offensive powerhouses, but like I said, I'm really enjoying seeing this Gigantamax really boom, and I really want to see how much extra pressure it can apply. Eduardo going for the switch again, it's that Incineroar with that bad reputation it has of coming in, going for Intimidate, and then being able to apply that fake up pressure into the next turn. And lowering the attack stat of the opposing Incineroar and Terrakion is certainly putting Eduardo in a slightly better position. Uh, the Incineroar on Nico's side also going to go for that passing shot. So really, if you're Nico here, you're doing everything that you can to try and protect your Terrakion. I mean, it doesn't worry about the Intimidate so much. It's got so many attack boosts, I think it can afford to lose one. Um, but going for that parting shot as well is just going to lower the attack once again on that Rillaboom, really putting it at minus two. With the relatively healthy stat of that Terrakion at the moment, it might be able to survive a G-Max drama solo. I mean, it'll definitely be really precarious, but... If you're Nico, you've got to do everything that you can in order to try and enable it. But here we go. Taking center stage is the Gigantamax really boom. And Terrakion is Ooh. actually able to hang on with 47 HP. Is going to be able to retaliate with that back knuckle. Targeting down into the Incineroar and picks up the solid one hit KO. No more burning jealousy. Oh my goodness, that Terrakion got revenge. Yeah, I mean, the Terrakion's not scared. It's not going to sit there and be like, oh no, my attack stat's only at plus three now <laughs> instead of plus four. Uh, the, the Max Knuckle there was a super safe play because it was Porygon to start, and he's been bringing the same four every time, so you knew it was going to be Incineroar if there was a switch. Mm -hmm. And that's really big, to be honest, to be able to say, okay, well, you're going to get uh, a big amount of damage down. That parting shot cannot be undervalued at just how much it did in, in helping Terrakion take this. Uh, Terrakion being able to stick around, absolutely huge, because it lands the knockout there. Um, it's going to be a stretch. Obviously, Terrakion's Dynamax is done now. It does have the boosts from Beat Up and Justified early on. Uh, but if you could maybe switch it around and preserve it to a time where Trick Room is done, things could be very, very different here. And I'd be curious to see uh, exactly what he wants to do with it. I mean, the Porygon 2 is very, very healthy, so you would probably need those Beat Up Justified boosts. Uh, but, I mean, it's a stretch but I'll put it out there into the world, you still have the Dragapult for later, so maybe you could do it and, mm -hmm. and land it there. Um, I'd be curious to see what the Rillaboom does on its last turn, uh, but this could be a really nice switch if uh, the, the Rillaboom's just trying to get after that Terrakion. Yeah, Nico's saying you need to calm down, hit Terrakion, you know, you pick up a big KO, come back into the back, and the thing is, the close combat will still be able to deal so much damage, there's no burn in play on that Terrakion for later on in the game. Porygon 2 on Eduardo's side, gonna go for that Ice Beam though into the opposing Porygon 2, does do a decent chunk of damage as Porygon 2 on Nico's side does the same thing, but the targeting goes down into the Rillaboom instead, dealing nearly 50%. Quite right here by the Rillaboom, I think, as well, to go for that Max play, picking up some good damage onto that Incineroar. Not really too much thanks to the minus two attack stat, but I think the critical thing here is boosting up the special um, defense of both of Eduardo's Pokemon, particularly when you're against that Porygon 2 that we know is just going to be dealing out things like Ice Beam and Thunderbolt. And particularly if you're the Porygon 2 on Eduardo's side, we know how bulky it is. We know how it can just hang around on the field. And if it gets that special defense boost as well, it's going to be in the sort of the battle of the Porygon 2s, the one on the upper hand. Yeah, but I, I mean, the, the special defense boost is all well and good against the Porygon, but those aren't the offensive threats on Nico Davide's side of the field, right? He's got so many things in the back, such as Terrakion and Dragapult, <laughs> uh, which are going to be able to cause a problem. And key to note, I mean, that switch into Incineroar is great on a couple of reasons. Of course, he's able to take attacks a lot better. He's able to take the Max Quake in particular a lot better than the Terrakion would have been able to. He lands another Intimidate, and he's still in a position to land another Parting Shot, right? So he could really take mm -hmm. this Rillaboom completely out the game by lowering its attack to a negligible minus three. Um, and then once he goes from there, you've just got to deal with the Porygon, and at some point, you're going to be able to, to get the Terrakion in there. And we do just see that Eduardo realizes what's going on. He doesn't have the switches, his Rillaboom damage.